Welcome to Excess Returns, where we focus on what works over the long term in the markets. Join us as we talk about the strategies and tactics that can help you become a better long-term investor. Justin Carboneau and Jack Forehand are principals at Validia Capital Management. The opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Validia Capital. No information on this podcast should be construed as investment advice. Securities discussed in the podcast may be holdings of clients of Validia Capital. Hey guys, this is Justin. In this episode of Excess Returns, Jack and I discuss dividends and how some investors may put too much emphasis on dividends when in fact there are other considerations or ways to produce income. While dividends are an important source of total returns, focusing solely on yield may not be the best approach. We discuss the idea of a synthetic dividend, the concept of shareholder yield to drive better long-term returns, and much more. As always, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy this discussion. Okay, today we're going to talk about dividends, and um, we're going to discuss um, what you wrote about in your article uh, this week, which was um, about how you know maybe investors shouldn't be so totally focused on just high dividend, high income producing type of strategies. And there's other considerations that they should look at when taking dividends into consideration. Um, One of the things that we know from dealing with investors is that there is an appeal to high dividend paying stocks, um, particularly, you know, in a a low interest rate environment where, you know, something like the 10 years yielding like 1.3, 1.4%, you know, a lot of investors are looking for companies that pay dividends um, and they like to receive that income. But I think as you pointed out in your article, Jack, there's you know a number of other considerations that investors should be thinking about when looking at um, high dividend paying securities. So maybe to start, you can kind of talk about you know maybe the difference between the perception, the reality of dividend investing, and then we'll kind of get into some of the other specifics. Well, I think my first lesson from this article is apparently I need to go with the clickbait titles more often. Um, Because I think this thing's already up to like our third most viewed blog post of all time. Um, And probably not because of the content, but because we went with like a more aggressive title, you know, put down the dividends and slowly back away. So apparently like tackling controversial topics and using aggressive titles is something I I should be doing in the future. Um, We'll definitely have to do more of that stuff. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you can look look forward to my next article about why uh, why Bitcoin's going to zero and Tesla's about to be bankrupt. Um, we'll, we'll try. We'll try to tackle all the stuff at once. But anyway, go, going back to dividends. So it, it's not that dividends are a bad thing. I mean, dividends are clearly a good thing. And you know, we'll talk about later how dividends are, are a significant portion of the long-term market return. It's that there's this difference between perception and reality. And so investors like dividends a lot more than the data supports dividends. And so what I wanted to do in the article is maybe take a look at the reasons investors like dividends, and then maybe look at each one of them individually and say. All right, is is what the re, is this reason ap- actually true? And also, what other way could we maybe accomplish what investors are trying to accomplish with dividends, maybe using a different approach? And so that was the goal. I came up with maybe three different reasons in in the article while investors love dividends, and then I was trying to tackle why each of those may, maybe we could look at those in a different way than investors look at. Them. What are those ways? Let's get let's get into that. So so the first one is is that dividend high dividend stocks beat the market. And so on the surface, that's actually that is absolutely true. You know, if you look at the long term data, if you invest in stocks with high dividends you do outperform the market over time. But the important thing to do, and, you know, we talked about this in our article where we talked about, you know, why value investing is back in the past year. And, you know, a lot of people think value investing is back because it's value. But when you look behind the scenes, there's other factors at work. And it's the same thing here with high high dividend investing. You want to look at why do high dividend stocks beat the market. And and the, the easiest way to look at that is to take yield and invert it. So if you take yield and invert it, what do you have? You have price to dividend. And if you look at every value metric that's out there, what is every value? Value metric. It's price relative to something. And so what, what yield really is, is yield really is a value metric. High yield stocks are outperforming because they are value stocks. And so the, once you establish that, the question is, is it the best value metric or is there a different value metric that might be better? And, and that was my point is when you look at that, something like a value composite or something like price to cash flow or something like EV to EBITDA, they have long, better long-term returns than yield. And so if, if value is what's driving the outperformance of high dividend stocks, maybe there's a better way to capture value. And by the way, when, when you do that, you're still going to have yield. I mean, most value strategies, no matter which metric you use, have an above average, you know, above market level of yield. So you're still going to get your yield that way. It's just not you're not focusing on yield as your number one primary factor right and i think the second point that you brought up was you know people are buying or looking for consistent dividend growing stocks so stocks like there's something called the dividend aristocrats or maybe the dividend achievers type strategy which looks for 
stocks that have consist or companies that have consistently over a long period of time um, increase their dividends. But like you pointed out in the article, that's also getting a lot of quality into the portfolio. So in terms of identifying or trying to seek out quality companies, you know, is to your point on value, is there a better way to do it using quality metrics versus like looking for a dividend growing type of um, securities? This was something I pointed out on Twitter because I missed it in the article and I, and I should have put it in the article. And so someone pointed it out on Twitter and, and I commented because I think this is true. And it's the same idea. You know, investing in dividend stocks is not necessarily always a value strategy, but investing in the highest yield stocks is a value strategy. Well, th there's another way you can go about that, which is this whole dividend growth, dividend consistency, dividend achievers, however you want to look at it. Those strategies are looking for companies that are growing their dividends over time or paying consistent dividends, and those tend to be quality strategies. And so, again, the same thing that I said before applies. You know, your return from those strategies is typically coming from quality. It's not coming from the dividends. And so it's, it's more about just looking behind the scenes and saying, all right, I'm getting this excess return over the market, but why am I getting it and is there a better way to get it? And in the case of both value and quality, I think there's an argument to be made that there might be better approaches than focusing you know, on dividends as your primary factor. I think another reason that investors gravitate uh, towards high dividend paying stocks too is that, you know, think of an investor that has a $2 million portfolio. Well, if that investor can get a 3% yield in this market might be high, but if you know you were getting a three percent dividend yield on two million dollars, that's you know sixty thousand dollars a year in terms of income, and so I think there's this um, belief, and it can, it may be true that you know investors can live off of the income stream provided by dividend stocks and not necessarily have to touch um, their principal, but that that might be maybe I'm jumping ahead because I know we'll talk about sort of this idea of a synthetic dividend um, in a little bit, but I think that's another reason that investors are attracted to these high dividend payers because they want to sort of use the income as a way to draw draw that um, as income, if you will, and then just try to not sell the principal, not sell the securities. Yeah, so we, you know, we can do that now and we can kind of get back to shareholder yield, which we're going to talk about next. But the, the whole idea is if, if you give me free money, if you just put money in my account, I love that, you know, and every investor loves that. And so if that money that's just getting put in my account is enough to pay my expenses, then that's fantastic. I, I just, you know, there's, there's nothing better than that. You know, I don't have to sell anything because investors hate selling stocks. You know, I don't, I don't want to sell my stocks. I want to receive a dividend. But the reality is there's really no difference. Um, you know, if you're, if you're receiving a dividend, you are getting taxed on that money, assuming it's not in a retirement account, and then you're using that money to pay expenses. If I sell stocks, I'm also being taxed on that money if it's in a taxable account, and I'm using it to pay expenses. So there's no reason, really, that that income has to come from a dividend. And a dividend may be, may be more or less tax efficient, depending on a lot of factors, but there are certain cases where actually selling the stocks can be better. Because, if, for instance, if the market's down a lot and I have losses, it might be better for me to sell the stocks because I'm actually generating a tax benefit rather than receiving a dividend you know, and having to pay tax on it. So it's just a matter of... I think the, the idea of dividends makes a lot of sense. The idea of having money put directly in your account makes a lot of sense. But there, when you look at it behind the scenes, you know, if, if you have to create what's this called the synthetic dividend, which is just selling stocks you know, to pay your expenses, it's not really all that different. So the dividends really aren't as superior in this way as people think they are. Well, that's a really good point. You're basically, if you're doing the synthetic dividend way, you actually have control of the cash flows. I think there's some people view selling as, you know, you should whatever, never sell or, you know, the more touches you have in your account, the more potential failure points there are. But I think that's a that's a really good point. Rather than just a steady, consistent dividend, you have the ability to control when you take the cash flow um, by selling and you can manage the taxes, I think, a little bit more better and strategically by doing it that way. And you, and you also can look at your portfolio allocation that way. So, you know, I can determine, if, if I'm using a synthetic dividend, I can determine what I'm selling. So if I want to slowly reallocate my portfolio one way or another, I can actually achieve that through a synthetic dividend because I'm selling the stocks I want to get rid of more than the stocks I want to keep. So it, it, it's better in that way too. So I just think when you look behind the scenes, you know, the, the whole idea of income is very attractive, but the reality is not as good as the idea behind the scenes. And one of the things, when you look at the long-term return of the market, I think you have you know, roughly a 10% annualized return over the last hundred years or so. When you break the components of that return out, um, you have roughly four or five percent comes from dividends. The other comes from capital appreciation. However, dividends used to be a lot higher, you know, up until like 1960, 19, 1960s, 1970s. And then, you know, those the, of the total return of the market, a lot less has been coming from dividends over the past few decades than 
before. So that's just something that's changed in the market that investors should be aware of that, you know, over at least in the last 25 to 30 years, you know, much more of the market's return, um, I believe, it has come from capital appreciation, not from necessarily the dividends being paid. Yeah, and even when it was come, when more of it was coming from income, you know, it's important to sort of separate this out. There's two different things going on here. There's one that it's absolutely true that a lot of the market return over time comes from dividends. But what you care about as an investor is your total return. So what's not true is just because most of the return comes from dividends, it doesn't mean if I invest in the absolute highest dividend stocks I possibly can, I get the greatest return because I'm taking that big component and making it bigger because what I care about is the total return. So I want my, I want to have a high total return. So even if I invest in a value strategy or I invest in the the S&P 500, I'm still going to get a significant portion of my returns from dividends. I'm just by, by focusing exclusively on dividends, I'm not necessarily upping that return, even though a huge portion of the long term return comes from dividends. Right. And to your point about the high, the very highest dividend paying stocks, you know, a lot of times those are and granted, some of those are value stocks, like you pointed out at the beginning. But a lot of times stocks that are yielding 10, 12, 15 percent. I mean, there's something like permanently wrong with the business. Um, you know, you're, you're not getting that yield for free. You're probably getting that yield because you're taking massive massive risk with something in the underlying business that's not going well, which is why it's yielding that much. Um, but to get to the um, other point that I think you mentioned in the article, so you can combine dividend yield with other things to get a superior return. So why don't you just talk through what those other variables are and what that strategy is? Yeah, so dividend yield is not the only yield that exists. You know, as we talked about before, you know, a lot of companies are returning cash to shareholders via buybacks now. And so this idea of shareholder yield, which is just dividend yield plus buyback yield, that, that is, as it turns out, a, a much superior approach to generating an excess return over the market over the long term. And, you know, I included a chart from O'Shaughnessy, but Meb Faber's looked at this. A lot of people have looked at this. And, you know, if you optimize on shareholder yield, if you sort on shareholder yield, you get a much better long term return than if you just focus on dividend yield. And the other advantage of shareholder yield is it's a little bit more efficient because, again, dividends are not a tax efficient thing. You know, when you look behind the scenes, what, what actually happens for you as an investor, a buyback and a dividend are really not all that different. Um, the, the big difference being dividends are actually a little bit worse because they're less tax efficient. So the idea is maybe if, if for investors who want to focus on yield, shareholder yield might be a good place to go. And like we talked about before, with a shareholder yield strategy, part of that is a dividend yield. So you're still going to get dividends as part of a shareholder yield strategy. You're just not saying dividends are the absolute most important thing. You're mixing it with buyback yield and you're, you're sort of combining both ways that companies can return capital to shareholders. Right, because investors shouldn't forget that dividends are taxed they're taxed on the income statement when it comes through to the bottom line. And then they're also taxed at the investor level. So there's like a double taxation with dividends where with buybacks, you know, it's, it's not. Um, so that's a capital allocation decision that, you know, a lot of companies have been increasingly making, um, particularly over like the last 10 years, buybacks have been a lot more uh, popular and I think important and the driver of um, returns to some extent. So yeah, I think that's good. And I think um, the last point is that I think when it comes to investor behavior, which we know is very important, you know, the, the decisions that people make um, and having belief and conviction in something, this isn't like a knock. We're, we're really not trying to sit here and bash dividends. What we're just trying to give is the other side some considerations for it. But I think like, like you point out in the article, Jack, is, you know, finding a strategy that you believe in and sticking with it and having conviction in is, is probably the most important thing. So, it, you know, if dividends are part of that, then certainly it makes sense for the investor. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely possible that despite all these things we've talked about why you shouldn't invest in high yield stocks, it's, it's absolutely possible that you should take all that and toss it out the window. Because if you're somebody who just has huge conviction in dividends, and let, let's say just as an example, let's say with a, you know, a value composite strategy, I can get maybe 1% a year better than I can get with a high yield strategy. Well, that 1% may be a lot lower than what I'm going to give up behaviorally if I'm a huge believer in dividends. Because if, when, the, when the tough times come, if I can stick with my strategy, we know that's much more important than trying to generate that 1% return. So the, the point here is that although we're, we're making all these logical arguments why dividends aren't great, if you're just somebody who believes in dividends and that's all you want to hear about, you know, and you really will have long-term conviction in a dividend strategy, then you should follow a dividend strategy. Because if you're giving up a little bit of return, you're going to gain it back on, you know, improved behavior and improved ability to stick with your strategy. Yeah, I totally agree. So thank you guys for uh, watching this episode. Um, we'll put a link to Jack's article in the show notes and we will see you next time. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Justin again. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Excess Returns. You can follow Jack on Twitter at, at PracticalQuant and follow me on Twitter at, at JJCarboneau.
If you found this discussion interesting and valuable, please subscribe in either iTunes or on YouTube, or leave a review or a comment. We appreciate it.